Hey, this is Kevin Kitchens with Once Upon a Game, and today we're going to take a look inside of Fields of Despair, France 1914 to 1918. It's from GMT Games, uh, designed by Kurt Lewis Keckley. Uh, it's a World War I uh, block game with an interesting twist in that it is solo friendly. So, uh, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful artwork it looks like we're going to have here. Solo suitability is low and high. It's the first time I've ever seen one. It's got one solo scenario included. Uh, you may not be able to play the whole thing uh, by yourself, but you can uh, you can play the game. So let us get inside the box and see exactly what you get. It's a nice big uh, GMT box. Uh, one of their larger three-inch ones. So hopefully that's got enough room for everything once you get it out. Some beautiful artwork here. This is called The Taking of Vimy Ridge, Easter Monday, 1917, by Richard Jack. Alright, it's from the Canadian War Museum. Alright, so we have the Rules of Playbook. Standard GMT uh, uh, matte paper finish. It's, um, let's see, it's 24 pages indexed. Color, uh, full color with examples of play. Um, the main rules take you to about 20 pages with a few optional rules thrown in, their usual introductory notes and then describing each phase in detail. All right. Then we have the playbook. It's a little thicker. It goes to uh, 44 pages. And it includes the, uh, the extension of the rules, uh, design notes, uh, strategy tips, so on and so forth, scenario special rules. And then you have the five scenarios here. Um, and then the special section here, starting on page 21, so it's got about 15 pages uh, with solitaire play rules. Um, in fact, I opened right to it there. Solitaire scenario specific rules. So, like I said, that's about 15 pages. We just solo sequence of play and some, obviously going to be some modifications to the core game for this. But, again, the scenarios, the Playbook is in full color. Uh, there you go. Then we have, well, obviously, if you're uh, playing uh, two player, you're going to have a, a screen, I guess, to set up behind. You know, play your screen. Got some of your charts, your sequence of play. Um, this is obviously, well, I think these are identical, probably. So it's both. I should know all these symbols are on there. Yeah, they're identical. So those are just set up on your, on your side. To, I'm doing my stuff. Kind of thing. All right. So we've got our game board. And we'll open this in a little bit. It's got nice big hexes, which is really, really good. All right, so we do have counters. In addition to blocks, this is counter sheet one of two. The artwork is lovely. Very large counters, look to be about an inch. Oops. Let's get the old yardstick out here, take a look. Yep, they are one inch counters. All right, and then some smaller ones here as well. They punch very easily. Uh, they probably are roundable if you have a, an OL uh, corner rounder. Um, and smaller counters for markers. Okay, these are mostly planes and artillery, it looks like. Um, yeah, a couple of tanks here. The World War I style tanks. All right, and then we have sticker sheets. This is my first, it's gonna be my first uh, GMT stickered game. Art by the famous Joel Toppin. Um, so this will be interesting for me, is to, to actually go through the process of stickering blocks. Uh, so that should be fun. Cool. 
cool. So it's only one sticker sheet looks like. Full color. The Germans. Uh, British, French, US, and Belgian. And some spare stickers as well. So in case you can't pick up that strike, you got some spares. Alright. We have a combat table for hits on five or six. There's two sets here, one for each player. Combat tables for hits on a six, five or six. I'm sure that'll be pretty spelled out in the rules. But there's two identical copies of that. Nice matte finished cardstock. Well, it's kind of glossy on one side, or matte on the other. But very, very serviceable, very clear, and easy to read. Uh, player eight cards for playing the two player game, sequence of play, some of the same charts that you had on your uh, player screen, and then a lot more detail here. These are two sided, as well with some rules references on them. All right, then we have the Allied, uh, well, yeah, the Allied uh, tracking chart, artillery maintenance, air maintenance, supply capacity, uh, technology advancements, artillery. So this is the player reference card. And then we have one here for the central powers, basically just the axis. Same thing, just that each player would track their stuff. And yeah, and these are just single-sided, obviously. Well, take it back. The German is single-sided. The German player is going to just use it. The uh, allied side is double-sided because on the back is the solitaire player board. So you're tracking the different Germans. That's nice. It's nice that they can collapse everything onto a single board. Um, so you don't have to have two set up you know, when you're just playing alone. Central Powers Strength Point Track. This one's in black and white, single-sided. I assume this might go along with the Solitaire game. Um, we will find out. A couple of nice canvassy draw bags. One blue, one red. Even big hands can get in there. And on cold days, you can use them as, as mittens or do little really, really minimalistic puppet shows. But there you go. And as always, GMT bags. They always throw them in and they always get used. Um, a lot of dice. So we have five each. No, we have six each of black and blue to match any bruises you might have. And then we have blocks and cubes. Got cubes of red and white and blue and black. Standard size wooden cubes. Like 10 millimeter, maybe 8 millimeter. And then we've got the, the blocks. So these are Again, like I said, I've never done a block game. These are smaller than some of the Columbia block ones. I'm not sure uh, what GMT's other block games are like. These are uh, five, five eighths of an inch large, square. You get a lot of those, and you gotta put stickers on them. They have no stickers to begin with. All right. Get that. There's a kind of a flimsy insert in here. Uh, everything might fit down in this well and go there, but with the counters and stuff, you're probably going to want to do a GMT tray. Uh, I'm not sure if there's. It was pretty full to the top, so we're probably going to want to remove this, put things down, and get the counters sorted. All right, so we're going to take a look here at the uh, the game board for uh, Fields of Despair. Uh, it is a eight panel uh, board. So it's four by two. Um, beautiful artwork, nice large counter uh, hexes, uh, very clearly uh, defined. Um, the, the artwork's very clear, I mean. Um, take a look at it. 
So I'm just going to need to lay flat a little bit. Uh, and then you have uh, tracking tracking boards here on the right side of it. So you're going to get the map. You're going to get uh, a bunch of wooden blocks. You're going to get 12 six-sided dice. A bunch of, bunch of uh, cubes. A bunch of blocks to put stickers on. Bags. Two draw bags. A uh, central power strength chart. I get the, let's go ahead and put the board in. I'm gonna get the board. Central power strength chart, a double-sided uh, allied and solo player board, a German board for two players, two two-player aid cards, double-sided, two combat table charts, also double-sided, and a sheet of stickers to go on the aforementioned blocks. Uh, one sheet of counters, or two sheets of counters. Uh, we got counters and we got a sheet of markers, a very nice, large, uh, easy to read, full color. The uh, solitaire sequence of play chart, the central powers guide, and the solitaire rules chart. The two player screens for when you're playing two player. A large full color playbook. And the full color rules of play. And that is everything inside the box. Fields of Despair, France 1914 to 1918 from GMT Games. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!